होटल So it's the former site of the highest hotel in Europe. It was three stories high and looked like a big airstream trailer. They just dump all the garbage out the back so there's a big trash pile on the back side. But now of course life is greener so we're, hopefully people are tearing it down. But uh, they started rebuilding it's about five, six years ago, burned down ten years ago. One person was injured going out the window. Everybody else maybe got a lot. Used to come out. This is the snow melting port right there. They used to come out right about there. There's a plank coming out of the uh, second of the stairs. I think it's the third story. They built this up like a third story door, and that's where some of the people made this place in the place on fire. The guy was cooking on a stove, decided to change. And we'll go to a bottle right next to where the fire was. Anyway, live and burn, I say. So it's called uh, pre, pre 11. Uh, uh, basically, the hut of the 11. I'm not sure exactly how it got its name. There was kind of a rumor that 11 people survived up here one night in a storm. We built a hut here as a as a refugio, as a refuge for other people that trapped and then became a hotel and blah blah blah. Uh, back in the war it's rumored that uh, it was food occupied. They uh, actually ran telegraph, I don't know how high, but way high up. So when they planted the swastika on top of top of Europe, it was a big uh, propaganda coup for Hitler. 
you should spend a little more time trying to get to the oil fields in Azerbaijan, then we'd all probably be speaking German right now. But uh, instead, he went to the propaganda coup and missed the oil fields. Only about 100 miles that way. If he'd gotten there, it would have been hard to stop. Because that's they got tons of oil there. If he had controlled that, he would have had enough to keep the Panzers running in North Africa and stave off the Eastern Front. Probably unload a lot more bombs and missiles on London. And, uh, she got out! Oh, sorry. <laughs> just get, get me going. The mis thank, thank goodness they made some mistakes. Yeah. Yeah, we got one of our bombs from them. They didn't make mistakes. The biggest mistake was attacking Russia in winter, St. Petersburg. The biggest mistake was attacking Russia in winter. <laughs> I, I guess you could have learned from Napoleon on that one. Yeah, yeah. people keep doing that. Yeah, it's, it's not right. The Russians are smart enough to know that, you know, they can't stave off a huge attack by the most sophisticated military on Earth. But most of those sophisticated militaries can't handle the winter in Russia. Yeah. <laughs> so they just pull back. And as a matter of fact, when the French did it to them, they just they just leveled the place. They they burned their own buildings mm -hmm. down. They, they they cut their own. They, they, they burned. I mean, they just trashed the place. The, the Russians did. Yeah. So, so they, they didn't have anything. So they had no way to fall back. They just nothing to live off the land on the way out. They burned everything as they eat French approach. Yeah, okay, they got all the way into. Uh, <laughs> they got all the way to oh. the Kremlin. They took all the silver and gold out of the Kremlin, and then they just ran away with it. It was just weights around their ankles. They couldn't get out fast enough before the winter took them, because they had all that. So they, they just, they dumped it along the side of the road. And now one of the big chandeliers in the in the Kremlin, and one of the churches is called the Poland. The <laughs> minute a cloud the goes over, it becomes colder. <laughs> it's all the stuff he dumped. Anyway. Great success, man. <laughs> he captured the city, but he lost the war. And then he the same thing, 900 days in Leningrad, otherwise known as Sonda, uh, excuse me, was uh, St. Petersburg. The people ate the rats, the people ate the dogs, the cats, the dogs. And then about that. So we used to, back in the good old days, he used to put the wallpaper up with wallpaper paste, which was made out of wheat. They could peel off the wallpaper and scrape the walls. Whatever they could find. Uh, probably in the whole war, maybe. Yeah, I think, yeah. There's, there's a bunch of people just banished from the face of the earth to Hitler's. Uh, more than that. As a matter of fact, he's, he's a low number, 30 million for him alone in his lifetime, of his own people. Yeah, no, he was, he was uh, bar none, probably the worst person on earth. Yeah, Hitler was bad. Hitler was real bad. Stalin was, was terrible. There's very few people who can hold, hold the camera for you to hold the guys. Paul Pot tried to do his best for him. Paul Pot? 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 Anyway, right up here we got uh, a monument uh, memorial. This is one of these in Telakitna. There's one in uh, Puente de Linca, Aconcagua. But it's kind of you know, interesting just to read it, see what's going on here. So you can get the idea that a whole bunch of people have died up here. In Mexico, I mean, uh, Argentina, I can read some of the flags and sign up to the very much. But, you know, we saw a couple early on, on our trekking days. These are probably people who are more affiliated with the mountain. Like some snake or ate, ate it somewhere. Yeah, go to the guys. I'm to go to the guys. I'm going to show you an idea of kind of the, uh, <laughs> the burn of the I think they, what they 
they did is they took all the resources. Oh, yeah. Where's to go, rocks? That side. That side. You got some water on board. Yeah, short, short break because we think the. This is the place where when it burned down, everybody was going like, "Did it burn the outhouse too?" It's, it's, uh, right down by the old hut. That little hut down there was. Uh, where the power was coming from, the power and the heat for this place. And it, it was uh, totally derelict until this place burned down and they put a roof on that and made that a hotel. It said 4,200 meters. It seems a little bit high. Thank you. 